Greetings and welcome to the 45th episode of Retro Rant. It is time for some Amiga goodness, so we will be taking a look at Arazok's Tomb, released in 1987 by Aegis. Arazok's Tomb is a text graphic adventure game, a genre for which I harbor mixed feelings. On one side I am a huge adventure game fan, but on the other hand I strongly dislike some aspects of text adventure games such as clunky bosses, unfair puzzles and devilish difficulty. I didn't have this game back in the day, but looking through the library of Amiga adventure games I decided to give this one a shot. So let's see if this is a text adventure gem, like Curse of Rubenstein, or a title better left forgotten and obscure. We are greeted by a smile from this handsome guy, who seems very happy that we decided to play this game while he reminds me a bit of the way I look after some long adventure gaming sessions. Unfortunately, I couldn't find the manual of the game, but the premise is that you are a greedy reporter for a tabloid, and you are in search of Arazok's tomb. Your guide takes you to a nice forest in the middle of nowhere and chickens away, leaving you on your own to discover the mysteries of this place. Considering this is 1987, the graphics are quite good and detailed. The bodies that you will encounter are also very well drawn. Unfortunately, some locations share the exact same graphics and the screen real estate could have been bigger, but overall the visual experience is very pleasing. Unfortunately, there is no sound whatsoever in Arazok's tomb, which is a bummer, but lack of sound is another text adventure trope. I have to admit though, it is always disappointing, especially in games that rely on creating an immersive atmosphere such as this one. The writing of Arazok's tomb is actually pretty bad, one of the worst I have ever encountered in commercial adventure games. Of course, the top position is maintained by ChronoQuest so far. The descriptions of the locations are very laconic, keeping to a bare, boring minimum. There is absolutely no storyline and no information about the hero or the various characters you meet. Unfortunately, when I encounter substandard writing in a text adventure game, the immersion and the interest completely vanish for me. This is a text adventure game, a genre that heavily relies on written words to convey the experience of being in the game world to the player, so it is only to be expected that the text itself would be the top priority. If you want to experience what I consider to be excellent writing on Amiga games, I would recommend that you check the reviews on The Curse of Rubenstein and Darkmere, although the latter is not a text adventure. The passer of Arazok's tomb is actually quite decent. I had no problem having my commands understood, and the various abbreviations always help to create a fluid gaming experience. Unfortunately, there is no repeat last command shortcut, which is one of my usual pet peeves in text adventures. But how does Arazok's Tomb play as an adventure game? Well, the experience is way below average, although not terrible, because of some inexplicable choices made by the developers. The first botched choice is an extremely limited inventory. 
Well, I can understand that such a feature adds realism to an adventure game. In this one, the gameplay is 90% inventory management and 10% puzzles because of an extremely limited amount of items that you can carry. If I wanted such a thing, I would rather play one of the awful Dizzy games. The second botched choice, which combines with the first one to create an explosive, rating-shattering result, is that most of the items of this game are red herrings. So not only do you have to gather a huge amount of crap, which you will never use in this game, you also have the limited inventory. So, when you reach the happy point in time where you have to use everything on everything else, and believe me, you will reach this point sooner rather than later, you will need to drop everything in one place, get some items, go to try them, return to the place, pick up some new items, and rinse and repeat. Exciting gameplay, huh? What makes matters even worse is that at one place you cannot do even that, because you have a limited amount of time in which to explore some screens and get the items you need, only, guess what, you had better be carrying nothing and be good at guessing which of the items you find you will need. The puzzles are uninspired with a few nice moments, such as the hints provided by the book. The rest of them are quite mundane, but not bad. The only really bad puzzle I discovered was maintaining the spoiler-free policy. When searching for a hotspot, which was implied by a hint earlier on, guess what? There was no way to find this hotspot, and the room descriptions do not help you in any way. So you have to visit every room in the game in which the graphics imply that this hotspot might be present until you find it. Overall, Arazok's Tomb is a bad game that will appeal only to the most hardcore text adventure enthusiasts. I would recommend you steer clear of this one or, if you wish to see what this game is about, play it with a walkthrough or, even better, watch a long play. If you want a nice text adventure game that will not make you want to claw your eyeballs out like the guy in the title screen of this one, go play The Curse of Rabenstein. So that's it for now, and I'll see you next time!